What's up, friends, and welcome to another 6-1 Indie Showcase developer interview. I am Kyle Stevenson from the 6-1 Indie side, and along with me is our editor-in-chief, Harry. How you doing? I'm good. Ready to talk about games. Yeah, and those yeah. games we're talking about, we're joined by one of the showcase games we, we showed off today. Or, I'm sorry, two of the showcase games that we showed two. off today. Uh, the two people behind a Video Cult. We've got James and Jawar, makers of Airframe Ultra and Rain World, The Watcher DLC. How are you going, guys? Doing good. Going good. Yourselves? Wonderful. Hanging, hanging in. <laughs> hanging in. It's a, it's a long day, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know, working on the game in the game's PR space, the Gamescom just got over, so that's a whirlwind. To try to reconvene myself a little. Absolutely. Were you, were you guys there as well? Mm-hmm. Uh, some people from the team, not myself. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that's, a long, that's kind of a long flight, so... Yeah, that's from what, I, from what I've heard, yeah, for sure. Um, before we get into the games uh, themselves, I want to know, James and Joar, your your histories as game devs, how you got into the industry, and and just what kind of games you guys like to play. Absolutely. Joar, you want to go first? Kick it off? I mean, didn't you start game development before me? So it's going oh, from a logical. Okay, got you, got you. Uh, so age, age before beauty is what you're saying. <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, I um, I don't know. I think both of us had little circuitous routes into the game development space. Uh, we both kind of came from art backgrounds, but sort of different art backgrounds. Um, I was I, I did music for a while. I had, I was in like a, a a number of bands, and I had an electronic music duo doing chiptune music uh, back when that was a thing uh, with my my partner Lydia, and we um, we wound up playing like lots of uh, video game conventions, like the Paxes and all of the I don't know, pretty much all of those kind of events where there would be like nerd culture spaces, and uh, we wound up getting like a bunch of invitations because our fan base was a lot of game developers. So I, we had game developers that were like, hey, you guys should, you know, you guys are doing bleepity bloopity video game music. You should do, uh, you should do the soundtrack to our games. So um, we got it in it from that space. Uh, and then kind of, I guess it's like the skill set from having a, like managing a band and doing touring and stuff like that. Um, game development needs a lot of those same skills. So I kind of just wound up being the person who was organizing things and then at, got more responsibilities and now I'm sort of the CEO of a company and I have to deal with all that nonsense. So, you know, coming going from like basement uh, artist type to uh, having to go to the bank all the time. That's that's, <laughs> kind of, that's the weird route that I've taken. <laughs> Here I am. Love it. Jawar, what about you? Uh, yeah, I was a teenager several years ago and I was sort of That's messing crazy. around with a computer um, and I was doing some little hobbyist video game development and then I went to university for graphic design actually and I ended up not really doing that and also like uh, doing more and more of my video game projects on the side <laughs> instead of what I should be doing. <laughs> And uh, Rain World, our first game, actually s- started uh, during those university years and uh, was kind of a problem in me getting my diploma. <laughs> <laughs> but Amazing. at the end of the day, I eventually got it. And then we could focus on Rain World, Rain World full time. And same as James said, I'm also a little bit more from like an art background. Like when I was a kid, I was drawing and stuff like that. And uh, I've sort of taken that into the me- medium of video games, I suppose. Nice. And then, uh, then like... we did Rain World and James and I met over the internet. And that's hmm. that's how, it's, how it happened. I think that was, that was like a unique story back back in the day. Like, oh, we met over the internet and formed a company. But I think now everyone, every company is people who met up on the internet. Yeah. And yeah. Six no. one included. <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's just the standard now. Yeah. We used to, that used to be the thing that we'd talk about in interviews. Like, yeah, we, we were on like a forum and we would like, we, that's how we formed. And people were like, whoa, that's crazy. Isn't it, isn't it exciting to not meet a person that's your business partner? And now yeah. everybody just does it. We, we're, we're dusting up, we're setting up the dust. 
the, our last big release that we were doing things for was like seven years ago, so we haven't done any interviews. If, if we start doing archaic stuff, just like let us know. Nah, this is great. <laughs> no, <that's fantastic. laughs> uh, but speaking of Rain World, since you mentioned it was like seven years ago, do you remember, like, how did this start up? Like, what's the history behind Rain World? How did you get started with it? You mentioned that you did it a little bit in uni, but like, like where is this inspiration behind the Slug Cats? Like, <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, yeah, yeah. It basically started out as like a very small scope project. I was intending to make it like a multiplayer thing where there would be like one screen and you would run around and jump on each other or something like that. And then I had this idea that there would be three creatures, like a small one, a medium one, and a large one, and you would be the medium one. And you would hunt the small ones, but the larger ones would hunt you. So it would be a, like a tiny, tiny little food web going on in this simple little game. And then I worked on that and I made a devlog on a forum called TigSource, which is also where Ims and me met. Uh, and we eventually, it, it just sort of like the scope just kept on creeping and creeping. And eventually you had this... Uh, <laughs> this game that it is now with i don't know like a hundred different creatures or something like that well what i mean how long the development was a long time let's give them a, let's give them a, let's give them a hint of, of the scale we're talking about here. yeah i was gonna ask because like it released seven years ago but how yeah. much earlier did it begin wasn't the first I mean, that's another like... seven years isn't it yeah wow. exactly <laughs> that's awesome that's i love talking i love talking now because um we have people that would, would last time we were doing conventions uh, we'd have fans that would come up to us and be like oh yeah my my like my mom was a kickstarter backer for this game and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my god oh my god like i just turned i just like turned to dust just right yep. there just like <laughs> yeah time is always a funny thing until you have a young person remind you of how old you are yep. and then you're melting on the inside <laughs> Yeah, I, I was a uh, sophomore in college, I think, when you guys started uh, developing Rainworld, which is nuts to think Sounds about. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we got to show off a little bit of the, the Watcher DLC uh, awesome. today in the showcase. Where does that put us in the world of Rainworld proper? Like, what's, what's the story going on in the Watcher? And... Do you find it easy or difficult adding new ways to iterate on a game that you've been working on for 14 years? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. Um, So over such a long development time, there's tons and tons of ideas that are brought up. There's tons of sort of like intention that you have that just like can't possibly make it into a first release. So um, the Watcher, and even to a certain extent, some of Downpour, um, a lot of it is, I, uh, there's a lot of ideas that have, were not, not necessarily on the cutting room floor, but just stuff that we didn't have space to do in the first game, or do it justice, or that sort of thing. So it's kind of easy, because uh, for me, it's just like, okay, now I can finally do this thing that I've been wanting to do for 10 years, and we have resources for it, and we have like developers for it. Uh, so it's been kind of fun, and I'm really kind of excited to see how the fans get to experience this because there's a lot of things that were kind of like implied by the narrative of the other games that we're going to kind of touch on a bit more here. Uh, but also, we're trying to do like one of the big aspects of, of like the original Rain World experience is that you're going into this situation very blind. I don't know how much either of you have played of the game. It's it's difficult. It's long. It's uh, tedious. It's annoying. But like one of the key things is that you're kind of having, as a player, you're sort of having these paradigm shifts as you're sort of like, your your knowledge of the world is increasing and you're sort of like putting things together in your head. Um, And that's a really hard thing to do multiple times. Like if you can do it in one game, it's kind of like having a twist ending or something like that. Like you can do it once, but as soon as you do that, you can't really repeat the same thing within the same context. So I'm really trying hard to kind of create a new sort of, uh, a new experience that gives players that kind of feeling to it. Uh, So um, yeah, it's it's a challenge, but I think it'll be cool because I'm really focused, really focused on that mood. And that's something that the, I think original players will really resonate with and new players will get to experience like firsthand for the first time. Jawar, has there any anything in this DLC 
that you've been like itching throughout the entire time you've been developing that's finally coming to light that you're excited for people to I'm, I'm going to actually experience. I'm going to nix this because I don't oh, yeah. want him to say anything oh, I don't good want him call. to say anything good, <laughs> okay. call, good call absolutely nothing <laughs> I didn't even mean that to be like gotcha question either. No, I wasn't rushing. even thinking. I was like, oh, yeah. that's a good question. No, we're, we're being really, we're being really tight lipped with mm-hmm. uh, yeah, of course. every aspect of it. Yeah, very cool. We're we're excited to check it out when when it when it comes out. Um, Thank you very much. To, to so I've been working oh, yeah. the last month on uh, the other project. So. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, excellent say, transition. We're gonna we're gonna pivot over <laughs> to this other one because I'm super excited to talk about it. How long has the idea of a futuristic combat uh, racing combat game been working in, in your brains. Was this originally Rain World DS- DLC? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think uh, for a while now we have been thinking because Rain World is a uh, kind of a heady game, right? It's uh, it has like this complex AI going on. It has like some strange philosophical concepts. It's also something when you play it, you need to pay very close attention and like really look at everything that's happening and i think we we wanted to also do something that is uh dumb right yes and and loud loud loud. (laughs) fast yeah that sounds like a lot Uh, of fun (laughs) and that's this this is basically our take at that so also rain world was obviously uh, now it has some multiplayer uh, functionality, but originally it was a very sort of uh, introspective, like single player kind of thing. And for this one, we're hoping to make something where you can uh, yell and scream at your friends instead. So would so you it's, say it's basically about the contrast? So would you say it's more Mario Kart multiplayer than Mad Max Fury Roads? Or is it a weird combination or some other aspect to it? Goes, uh, a movie and a video game. I'm trying to make a uh, well. <laughs> yeah, why not? You mean a, aesthetically or in, in, in like in terms of, of totally? vibe, ambiance? I think it's probably a good combination of the two, right? Mm. Yeah, I think it, like the the sort of the visuals are a little bit more Mad Max Fury Road and the gameplay might be a little bit more Mario Kart. So okay. yeah, so, somewhere Feel in free to use that. <laughs> it definitely has that kind of comic sort of aspect to it where you're like using sort of oversized like a, a giant lead pipe and you can like whip a chain and drag a person around. Like it's, it, it's I think realistic enough to where it, you kind of feel the impact but uh, cartoonish enough to where it's just like wacky, wacky mm-hmm. violence. Right? Nice. We're hoping, I, to, we're hoping to hit that, yeah. hit that midpoint. I, I have a two-parter for you because I, as a growing up playing on the OG PlayStation, I love Twisted Metal. I love, Absolutely. I love Road Rash. I love the Vigilante series. And where um, are those games now? Where I was going to ask, like, where did they go? And yeah. in your eyes, what makes a good racing combat game? So this is exactly what we were asking ourselves. Like when we were starting to play with this, we were looking around to see, like, oh, who else is doing this sort of thing? We're like, nobody. Literally nobody is making these. This was like the most fun that I had when I was like oh my uh, God, yeah. a, a game kid on the couch. It was like yeah. you got your jug of Mountain Dew, you've got like <laughs> Twisted Metal, and then you're just like yelling profanities at your friends on the couch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that was that was great. And I, I don't feel like there is that right now. So we're really hoping to sort of like give that experience again, right? Yeah, and I think very much so. Like uh, basically the... People, people tend to call it couch co-op, but it's not always co-op, right? It could also be competitive, but that, that's sort of like a couch, local, multiplayer uh, feeling. The couch is had. the important part here. The like, couch, couch is the important yeah. part. You're sitting couch. on the couch. Yeah. Couch of 2024. Let's, let's focus on that. Basically, uh, we are interested in exploring whether or not you can create that same mood in an online game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we will also have local multiplayer as well. So I don't know, like we're, we're trying to sort of bridge that gap between mm-hmm. uh, old school multiplayer, like really old school multiplayer. Yeah. And so in the, in the build modern. right now, we have a setup where you can basically do split screen on one computer and you can also, or one system, whatever you want to do. And then you can also connect to online players. So you could potentially have a bunch oh. of people on one machine or one couch connecting to a bunch of other people on other couches 
and yeah, I just having that kind of uh, that asymmetrical ability to sort of just like drop in and play and have everyone around be in on it, I think is, is a key aspect that we're exploring. Mm-hmm. It, there's tricky parts to it, but I think if we can just make it fun and dumb and fast and everyone can just hop on, I think that's, I think that's a winning, winning combo. That's what yeah. we want to play. So. Yeah, no, I, I love that idea. Cause you know, we, we've done like extra life events in the past where some of us are in person and other people want to play with us, but that there, there are modes that don't let mm-hmm. that happen. So to, yeah. to have that in this is fantastic. And, and going back to like your version of this genre, what do you think is the most important in terms of you creating the characters in the game that you're playing as? Is it the vehicles themselves? Is it the weapons? Is it the special abilities? Like, what is your your main focus f- on the playable aspect of it? I think customization, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. like sort of player individualization. Like we're like. You are, we already your has already done like an amazing job with like a character creator, which I think we're going to make public relatively soon. So people might want to keep an eye out for that. Basically, Sweet. the idea being that you can kind of like come in, you can create your character, you can like choose your bike, you can like choose the paint job, you can put decals and stuff on it, and you can put on your motorcycle jacket, your various helmets, and all that, and like really get yourself an identity on there that you can sort of play through. Um, and I, I think that's a key part of it for me you are what, what's the key part of it for you uh i forgot what the question was sorry <laughs> what makes a good combat racer what's good yeah what's, like is it the vehicles is it the, the, the weapons the the special skills uh yeah uh yeah a good combat racer i i suppose uh, it's about the I'm I, I'm like a I, I'm like a procedural animation kind of uh, developer I suppose the, so that's that's kind of what I'm into like I'm very interested in how you can make code feel differently and like different movement schemes and stuff like that I know in Rain World that's not necessarily revered for its intuitive and immediately smooth controls but uh, it's unique right it's like something you don't really see in another game and that's the experimentational aspect of it and here I I am interested in this um aspect of controlling like a floating vehicle and how you can how you can give that like a good elastic feel and when you take a turn it should feel like you should feel the g forces and stuff like that so yeah i i think it's about the game feel and like uh that comes down to movement pretty much I like and it's, that a true, lot, yeah. it's true with this where like, all right, so we now have multiple different airframes, multiple different hover bikes and mm-hmm. having them all control and feel very different. So it's like a really, it's like a mini kind of experience where you get in there and you're really kind of like chewing the, like you're chewing the racetrack. You're like feeling the inertia and the momentum around those things. And I think that's really fun because it's just like a joy to explore the physics of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like even if you don't even, even if there isn't even a game on top of that, you're just like you feel good just kinda like zooming around. So I like yeah. I, I like that he's dialed into that. Nice. Yeah. As much as I like I love Twisted Metal, I hated controlling Sweet Tooth. Because <laughs> it didn't yeah, feel fun. Good. So like I was like an axle guy. Cause it was I felt better zooming around. So I love that you're you're making a point to make everything feel fun. Was Sweet Tooth was Sweet Tooth really I, I remember it. I mean, we, it would have all, I remember those games would have all, all sorts of ridiculous control schemes. Oh yeah. So was I, that, I, was I they recently, was that the one where you had the, you, you were actually using like the trigger controls for the different wheels. Am I crazy? No, I, I don't think so. I just, okay. I, it being like a big ice cream truck, it was very bulky and it was hard to yeah. turn. Um, and they recently just came back out on PS plus as like part of the classics program. And I replayed it. I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> the times have changed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Harry, do you want to bring it home with our, our last question? Yeah, sure. So we ask every one we interview a very specific question where there's no right or wrong answer. So that's prefacing that. Um, but what does indie mean to you? Take it away, Orr. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'll know. Not, not having a design doc, maybe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that. Uh, that's such a good inside baseball comment. <laughs> 
Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously the budget, but I think it's mostly this. It's like, I think it's the spirit of it all. Like, I think the, the design dot comment is a really good one. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like indie games are kind of more organic. Like, they kind of grow from a singular idea, and they're usually through uh, a kind of a, a singular perspective. It's almost like it. Like, we've had this interesting space where indie games were both low budget, but also kind of like auteur. Like, you would see with like a like a like a famous director who gets to sort of like dictate the entire process. Like with indie games, you can have that. And with larger games that are more designed by management or designed by committee, like you really lose the singular vision of it. So I feel like there's definitely um, games where the larger budget, um, but they still have that kind of indie uh, auteur aspect to it. And we've kind of grown to that point over the past 20 years of indie games. Um, so for me, it's like a spirit. It's a spirit, and it's kind of like an artistic sensibility. Nice. Yeah. I think uh, I think that's uh, I think that's a very good point because uh, with the internet and the connectivity of the world as it is now, basically, if you can appeal to five percent of people with a niche product, you are mm-hmm. going to appeal to a huge audience. Uh, so it's viable to be to be indie. Yep. Nice. You can be Absolutely. niche and kind of kind of broad at the same time. Yeah, I love that. I love that answer a whole mm-hmm. lot. Thank you guys. Um, so thanks once again for allowing us to show off both of these games in the showcase. And Absolutely. Thanks for showing them for us. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, anybody who is watching this, if they want to learn more about Rain World, The Watcher, the Downpour DLC, as well as Airframe Ultra, where can they go to find all that information? Uh, I don't know. TikTok probably. Yeah. Yeah. Just destroy <laughs> it. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome uh when, when can we expect to to play these games oh um that's a good question actually uh that's that's for other people we don't we, don't, we don't know that we don't know that <laughs> cool. stuff we're Fair. just yeah we're just we're in our ivory towers just like i love that doing stuff and yeah just working like as James hard as we possibly can then yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like James mentioned, just go search on the TikToks. You'll, you'll, find, yeah, whatever, you'll find that information whatever. everywhere. Uh, all that info will be on uh, the 61 site. We'll have all links to all the store pages. And please go wishlist these games. They help a ton for all the developers they shown. They definitely do. Yeah. Um, we love you very much. Please go watch the main showcase if you haven't already. It's on our YouTube channel as well as our website uh, with all the other developer interviews and the 40 other games that we showed off today. Um Yeah, we love you very much. Please stay safe out there and remember to play more indies. Bye. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all.